Hey, this is Matt with Let's Talk Music. I'm here with the band Owls and Aliens. Welcome, fellas. Hey, hey what's up, up, man? Hello. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. Thank you for being on. Um, so if you could, real quick, just uh, give me a quick introduction, what you do. Yeah, sure thing. My name is Dakota. I'm the drummer here at Owls and Aliens, and you can also hear my luscious background vocals sometimes. I'm Jeff. I'm the lead guitar player. Uh, I don't do backups at all. <laughs> I'm Travis. I do rhythm guitar and I do occasionally sing some lead vocals. I'm Nick and I play bass. Awesome. So, and we're missing the singer. You said Dylan? Dustin. 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 Okay, my bad. Uh, Dustin uh, is at his sister's wedding this weekend. One, one of his sisters. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. No, you yeah. can't miss that one. So, he couldn't uh, join us, unfortunately. I actually had a, a, a live interview at the Newport here in Columbus and uh, had to cancel because I forgot about my little cousin's wedding and uh, no. she's a redhead. So I'd have been in some deep shit. <laughs> so uh, what is it? Klamath Falls, Oregon. Did yeah. Right? Klamath Falls, Oregon. Whereabouts is that? Basically in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> No, I mean, it's uh, it's down the yellow brick road. Yeah, <laughs> it's in like South Central Oregon, uh, just about 15 miles from the California border, up in the high desert. So a really unique area on the West Coast. Gotcha. Yeah, I got a brother that lives in Vancouver, Washington. He's got one of his best friends actually lives in Portland. Oh, nice. Yeah. So <clears throat> been out cool. there a few times myself. Uh, you know, big state, a lot of uh. Yeah, it is a pretty big state. One of a lot of forestry and stuff. So let's yeah. talk about the uh, the new single, "These Vices." Yeah, that's that's a good jam, fellas. I like that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank like you the so artwork much. too. That's pretty killer. Did you guys do that, or did somebody else do it for you? So actually, Dustin's sister, the one that he's at the wedding at, she's the one that did that artwork. Her name is Becca. Shout, ah. out Becca. Shout out to Becca. She's done a, a majority of our artwork and logos and things like that. And the visualizer itself was made by uh, Nate uh, Robichaud. He's a good friend of ours. We met through Young Other, one of the other MBK bands that were managed by um, the Nate works with Young Other a lot. So we got linked up through him and he made that sweet visualizer for us. Yeah, it, it's uh, definitely some cool stuff. I mean, she she's a you got a heck of a talent. I'm sitting here looking at it, and that is that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's rad. Thank you. So uh the these vices, I'm guessing that the uh the, that's about drugs or what what's the meaning behind the song? Trap. Um lyrically, yeah. Um addiction was a big part of it. Addiction to depression, um, reflection inward and how to get better. That's pretty that's all I can say about that really at this time. <laughs> okay uh, so i mean tell me a little bit about yourselves i mean you know how did you guys all meet up how long have you been a band it's a pretty crazy convoluted story honestly uh, we've been a band since 2019 and it kind of all started when uh, my band box brothers had ended so i got a hold of dustin mm -hmm. um, let's start a band and he was like well i know two guitar players immediately jeff and travis and i was like Oh, yeah, I know Jeff, because he had been coming to my shows at Box Brothers for a long time. And oh, nice. I had, heard, I had heard of Trav, and the missing link was Nikki. And after a few practices, Jeff was able to, to drag him along, and uh, then the whole picture was complete. So uh, 2019, that means uh, you guys really didn't get to get your foot in the door because of COVID, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We had a bunch of shows that were starting to get lined up and and secured uh, for the end of 2019 or sorry, the beginning of 2020, uh, the middle of 2020 and all of that. Um, yeah, got canceled. So it's been kind of tough, but things are picking up now and we're very excited. What's uh? <clears throat> so what's the restrictions out there in Oregon? Do you guys still right have any? No, we've got nothing right now. No masks. Um, no, I don't even think there's quantity limitations. I've never been asked for a vaccination card or anything like that. Yeah, they haven't been too keen to turn on. I know I, I still at the hospitals, they have some stuff, but elsewhere. Oh, yeah. Just in right. the doctor. 
Like if you go see a doctor, they'll make you wear a mask while while you're in there. Right, right. That's the same here. Um, no, because there for a minute with uh, our venues, you had to show you know proof of a negative test within seventy two hours or a vaccination card. Um, they recommended you wore a mask, but they didn't. You know, I guess really enforce it. But you know, I know that the West Coast a lot of things are different. You know, especially you know like around California and stuff. Yeah. So, it had been like this for a while, but I think we're now it's really that's starting to all lift. And I, I keep hearing more and more of less restrictions. So I see you guys are getting ready to hit the road. Yeah. Like doing a West Coast leg, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're in the process. We've got a lot of it um, planned out and still getting a lot of it figured out. So we're, we're stoked for it. Okay. Uh, any plans of branching out further into the United States or are you just sticking to the West Coast for right now? Uh, we definitely plan on reaching out throughout the U.S. Um, our management is in Florida, and they're going to be having a big festival, hopefully, next year. Mm -hmm. And the goal is for us to be able to um, not only play that, but then play a bunch of shows throughout the U.S. on the way to and from. Okay. You guys playing any festivals out there during this leg? Uh, no, not during this leg, but we've we've got a couple festivals that could be in the works that we can't announce just yet. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, I, I, uh, I appreciate secrecy. It, it makes it all that more interesting. <laughs> there's a lot that's being planned right now. So it's like, there's only so much I can, I can, uh, there's only a little bit of the carrot that I can hang out right now. Okay. I mean, Hey, that's fine, buddy. I mean, I understand. So you guys are actually part of a um, music group. Does that mean that you're under a label? No, not a label, just uh, art management, they, their management company, MBK Music Group, based out of uh, Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like, uh, I don't know, what, what's some of your guys' like, what got you into music? I mean, just each of you, if you could in, answer individually, I mean, just what, what was it that, you know, one day you said, man, I want to pick up a drumstick or I want to pick up a guitar or a bass, you know, what got you into it? Yeah, you know, for sure. Um, I would say for me, um, I started hearing music before I can ever remember because my dad was a musician and always had music cranking. And uh, I remember him playing guitar and just thinking like, that's so badass. That's something that I want to do. And I would grab that guitar and like pretend like I could play it even though I couldn't. And so eventually I started, you know, actually learning how to play guitar. I was never really a lead guy, mostly rhythm stuff. And um then when uh, middle school hit, um, I started playing that guitar here on rock band game. And I remember my buddy had the drums and I thought it was so fun. I had a really mm -hmm. fun time playing the drums on the rock band. I was like, you know, I think I'm actually learning real beats. So next thing I know, my buddy has a drum kit and I get behind it and I can play it just because I've been able to do the rock band stuff. So I begged my mom for a kit and she got me one and then I started a band in high school and I've just been playing music really since I was, since I can remember. What was your first kit? My first kit with this piece of crap, it was called a jam. It was some off brand, but it was really cool color. It was green. I loved the color and I didn't even have any cymbals at first. My first kit was just the snare and the kick drum and the toms. And gotcha. I was like, mom, what am I supposed to do? Like you're supposed, you're supposed to be cymbals. And she's like, well, I don't know. I don't I don't, how am I supposed to know that? So <laughs> I was able to like gather some like really crappy symbols from this like other little tiny kit that my friend had and slowly but surely piece things together. Gotcha. How about yeah. you, man? What got you into it? Me? Be anybody. <laughs> I, um, I was never into music. What happened was I was in the human slave trade and these guys bought me because they oh, needed God. a basis. <laughs> Uh, I just kind of was walked on stage half naked and just threw a bass in my hands and like, if you don't play, you die. <laughs> so I, just, I just fell into it. And now here we are. True story. Very true. 100% mm -hmm. true. Uh, I mean, I hope you guys got your money's worth. Right. <laughs> hey, he paid us. Honestly. Wait, wait, wait. They got money? <laughs> 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 All right. Have a um, I grew up on a lot of punk and grunge. I had an older cousin who 
introduced me to a lot of core bands at a very young age, like No Effects, Suicide Machines, um, Blink and Green Day were really big for me, Sublime. And so I've just been an avid music lover since I was like seven or eight. And I tried skating for a little bit, was horrible at it. And I picked up a guitar and it was a lot better. And I've been doing that since 13 ever since. Nice. And I guess it's your turn, buddy. Uh, you know, I, I watched a Christmas story a lot when I was a kid. And I didn't like that they didn't have a lot of uh, music in it. So I thought that maybe I could just sit there with some licorice and a goldfish on my dresser and sit there and flunk a out of tune uh, missing two string ukulele. Missing two strings means there's only two left. So. Right. Imagine how boring and annoying that thing is, you know. Right. Um, so, yeah, just worked on that and decided to make it a little better if I could. While my parents um, decided not to scream at me because it sounded terrible to them as well. <laughs> thankfully, the usual was pretty small. Yeah, thankfully for them, I had a lot of chores to do, so I yeah. <laughs> didn't spend a lot of time on it. So, yeah, that's how it started for me. So, so like... Uh... Broke parents. <laughs> who, who do you guys draw influence from i mean not j just as far as like a, as a whole like you know what influences your style of writing you know your you know maybe just your uh, overall influences to all together honestly a big one um that kind of really set the tone was when you guys connected with <clears throat> Yeah, Blind Melon was a big one. Me and Jeff, we, you know, we come from different musical backgrounds, but very different. Um, and so much so that Blind Melon that was a catalyst for, you know, our connectivity, though. So I got to give major props to Blind Melon for that. Yeah. Okay. You guys play like so different styles that when they first got together and hung out, they knew that they each played guitar, but didn't even try to play together because they knew their styles were so different. Yeah, we just skated it and got drunk all summer. Like it just it was awesome. Best summer of my life, to be honest. I'll say I can't blame you there. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, <clears throat> as a yeah, uh our influences stem like from all over the place, honestly, from like ACDC to Blind Melon to Asking Alexandria. We all have a different favorite band. Yeah, so it's just it's like it's huge, really. Gotcha. And uh like does uh who who does the unclean vocals? That's Trav. Okay. No, 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 the unclean. So, oh, the unclean. Un unclean? Yeah. yeah. That's Dusty. Sorry, yeah. That's Dusty. That's Dusty. And that's, okay. something, that's the dude who's not here right now. Right. Just curious, because, I mean, some, like, you know, you got bands like, you know, Bullet for My Valentine or whatever. The bass player did the unclean vocals, right. vocals and stuff. So, you know, I really didn't know, uh, <clears throat> you know, it just, just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Justin, you know, he's like, he's our main front man. So he does the majority of the vocals, kind of, he does clean and unclean and a mix of all of that too. So it provides quite a dynamic. Yeah. So, I mean, nowadays, uh, what kind of kit you play? Nowadays, I'm playing a, a PDP. It's actually a really cool kit um, because it's one that they don't really make, that they made it like 10, 15 years ago, but they only made it for a short window. And it's their eight ply maple, which most of their kits now, it's only six ply. Um, and it's all black. It's like a flat black. I really love it. And I use uh, Sabian uh, symbols, the HHX and the AAX series. Okay. See, we, we got some plugs there, man. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, about, what about you guys? What kind of guitars you play? I like... Um... If I could, if I could afford it one day, I'd, I'd prefer a nice Gibson SG. But since then, uh, I like I like to play with Jacksons or Charvels. They they seem to be quite. Um, some of them seem to be quite built well. Um, mm -hmm. That's through years of sifting through different types of guitars. My main axe is a Charvel as well, too. Wow, you don't I see that too a, much. I play a mean skin flute. What's uh, the brand? Big. Black one. Oh God! <laughs> His name's Jackson as well. His name's Jackson as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> this really man's nice big, yeah. man big black Jackson. It, it is. He's not. It's got some That's sharp that. inlays for some jeans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I 
uh, Charvel was really popular years ago when I was younger. I hadn't really heard of anybody using those much anymore. It's kind of like Washburn or whatever, you know, I mean, everybody now is ESP or, you know, right. Jackson or you know, Jackson or, I mean, what else is, I mean, a guy I interviewed last night actually had um, an SG from like the 1980s that he Ooh, yeah. was, that he played when he first started and like he was on stage with bands like uh wendy o williams and uh who else was there king diamond i mean dude dude was a big part of the la metal scene and i was just like you know to to talk to him and to listen to his new single i was like how (laughs) but i mean he's you know in his 50s or 60s now so and he's just you know said he was throwing his hat in to see what he could find. And, you know, I mean, he actually wrote a really good single and, you know, uh, you know, great dude. If you guys get a chance to te- check him out, his name's Dan Sindel out nice. of, uh, out of Los Angeles. But yeah, man, I mean, you know, I just, <clears throat> I've been doing this for a short time, you know, so I'm still kind of rusty. Uh, you know, I try to do as, as much research as I can. Of course, today, um, I've been working on my website all day. I am not a, um, a website builder so yeah, i'm watching that. video after video after video and yeah you know it's, it's a pain. pain yes it is especially if you don't know what you're doing so yeah but um yeah it just uh it was you know like chatting with people uh especially you know independent bands because what i've learned about them is you know you guys you strive a lot more than what, you know, the sign bands do. You, you strive for, you know, perfection. You strive for, um, you know, the best live show that you can put on. And, you know, that's, that's what this music industry nowadays needs. Right. Cause I mean, I appreciate you saying that, man. Thank you. I mean, you've got, you know, bands that they sound the same so much anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, and and then the guy I talked to the other night called it um a, what it produce or produced music or something. I can't remember what he called it, but it, I mean it it made perfect sense. I mean, you know, everybody's using you know click tracks and freaking you know auto tune and stuff like that. And you know, it, it's awesome it's to see it's a lot of right. And, and that's what's great about you know you guys with you, you know independent bands is you know you get up there and you know, you make a mistake. Most people ain't going to pick up on it, but if somebody's listening, you know, careful enough, they're like, Oh man, he made a mistake, but look at how well he recovered. You know, there, there's nothing there to cover your ass. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, hats off to you. It's all authentic. Thank Thank you. 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 Yeah, it is. And that's, that's, what's great about it. I mean, that's what music should be. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go back in the day before all this crap and, you know, manufactured music that's what he called it you go back in a a day before all this crap you know i mean blood zeppelin and hendrix and all them they just got out there and did their thing and hey if you like it you liked it like people can filter them now right so and before like records and all that Mm -hmm. all they had was sheet music and music stores would just be filled with tons of paper and it was just Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the only way you could hear a song again was to buy that sheet music and play it yourself (laughs) so look at how far we've come yeah yeah i mean (laughs) technology is a good thing but i mean like i said i just i i i appreciate much more of the the bands that just really put themselves out there yeah Totally. You know, I go, I mean, I've seen major bands, you know, I've seen Pink Floyd, all kinds of, you know, major acts, but I've seen a lot of uh, guys that, you know, we have a lot of local things that go on around here. And I'm like a band, Adamira, that I linked up with, you know, they've been through like three singers now since I have, but I mean, they're amazing life. Seeing them at a little club that maybe holds, I don't know, 100 people. With the yeah. red jumpsuit, a uh, red jumpsuit apparatus, and you know it was all the opening bands were killer, and you know so it was jumpsuit. I mean, yeah, you know, it's just... killer. Oh, Those yeah. are the kind of shows that make an impact. I feel like. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, you go to these sold out arenas. I mean, yeah, they're cool. Cause I've been, I've been to rock on the range and all yeah, that good stuff cool in, their own t- in their own way, you know? Right. But. So, uh, well, uh, if you don't mind at the end of our interview, I would like to, uh, once I edit it and stuff, I'd like to put up your new single, uh, so people can check it out. Yeah, yeah of, of course. course. Absolutely. Oops. Thank you. Please. That is an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, some people will say no. You know, that's why I asked if you was signed, because if I do it when you're signed, I get a copyright claim. Oh, right. No, yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. YouTube is uh, pretty strict on stuff like that. But, you know, I understand. No, please do. Yeah. Thank you, man. Absolutely, bro. Thank you, of course. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate your time. It was great talking to you. And, uh, you know, I'll look forward to some new stuff coming out from you. Speaking of which, uh, anything as far as a new EP or anything? Yeah, we should have a, actually our first full-length record coming out uh, this summer. I don't have an official date, but um, it should be here pretty soon, and there might be a single or two that comes along with it. I have a side project coming out with a whole orchestra of people farting. Oh, God. Dude, can I be part of that? <laughs> like 70 people yeah send us your it. send us your track yeah you need to send us uh the samples send i'm talking about bell and some bourbon man i'll fit right in send us your best part of samples Musical <laughs> <fruit>. <laughs> all right guys well again i appreciate your time and uh i hope you all have a good evening thank you so much we appreciate you too thank you. thanks for chatting hope See you have a good later, night yeah. all right Rock thanks on. I see it all the time, not 
something right in my mind And yet these vices, they are here to stay And that's okay, cause I'm losing anyway If I look at you 